Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and you're looking at a black hole covered by uh, a lot of various things. There's actually quite a lot of things going on here, because we're trying to recreate a very distant um, quasar, a very distant galaxy known as APM 8279-5255. This galaxy is known for having the largest reservoir of water in our universe found to date and there's actually quite a lot of water out there. And so in today's video we're going to see what happens if a lot of this water actually gets close to, to itself and if maybe, just maybe we'll be able to create some kind of a really cool object like a star or possibly even a black hole if all of this water combines into one single object. So let's find out and let's play around with the Universe Sandbox. Welcome to What the Bath. So we're actually going to erase this black hole because, because we currently don't really need it. It's not required for our uh, deeds, but we're going to imagine that we're, we go to this uh, galaxy 12 billion years um, light years away from us. And uh, we're going to basically imagine that somewhere out there, there's this cloud of water everywhere. So essentially, this galaxy has like 4,000 times more water than our um, galaxy, the Milky Way. And as a matter of fact, it's something like 20 billion times more massive than our sun. Um, and most of that mass is actually very close to the central black hole. So there's a lot of water out there. And it's very likely that some of this water combines into large chunks of um, things, large objects. So let's actually place something in the middle here. And we're going to name this particle that's relatively small. It's only about 200 meters in size uh, water. This is basically a large chunk of ice that's going to have other chunks of ice close to it that will eventually basically approach it and combine into one single object. So let's start by basically seeing what we can actually create in Universe Sandbox if a lot of this ice, a lot of this water basically starts orbiting around a central object and starts approaching itself and basically combines into something singular. So what we're going to do is we're going to add rings here and specifically we're talking about rings of Saturn. These are the ones I usually choose. Um, and we're going to choose, uh, I'm going to show you what I usually do here. Choose manual settings because we want to change color. Let's change color to something that looks more like water. So something more blue. And um, here we're going to select total mass. And uh, since I'm actually aiming to create some kind of a I guess gas giant first. Let's uh, select the mass equal to about, I don't know, like 30 Jupiters or something like that. Uh, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to keep everything else the same. We're going to change the radius. So let's place this relatively far, actually. We're going to place this at a distance of about up to maximum of about 0.1 astronomical units. And we're also going to change the shape of this to a sphere that's going to be randomized and it's going to also be filled completely. So if I add this ring now, you'll see that it creates this very beautiful, large, large, large amount of particles that are essentially just water. And each of these is actually very, very massive. Now, most of these will actually start orbiting my water particle now, but to stop them from orbiting, I'm going to go in here and hold all of their velocities because I want them to slowly move toward my central water object in the middle. And what I'm trying to create now is essentially, I'm trying to create a large object. And in this case, it's going to be a brown dwarf or possibly very large gas giant. And this is going to be essentially the first object that's going to be created um, through, the, uh, through the combination of all of these particles together as they approach my tiny, tiny water particle in the middle. And so here come the first collisions. They're kind of missing my water because it's a little bit too tiny. Actually, also because I think my time is running a little bit too fast. So let's slow down a little and maybe one of them will combine. And here we go. Once uh, a few of them combined, it becomes a chain reaction. They all start combining really, really quickly. It basically takes um, just a few days for us to grow this object to very massive proportions. And as you can see, it's growing really, really fast. It's already at 10 masses of Jupiter. You can kind of see it's already formed a shape, although it's kind of hard to see because it's so dark here. So I may have to place some sort of a bright object just so you can see what's going on. But it's at 12 masses of Jupiter, uh, contains 
Huh, why is it containing silicate? Okay, that was my mistake. I've created silicate matter. That I should have done that. And so there we go. This is much, much better. It's also much brighter. So you can actually see how all of this grows in real time. And there goes our water bowl, increasing in size, becoming what would basically be uh, a rogue planet that is slowly acquiring more and more mass. It's uh, going to become a gas giant first as it acquires massive amounts of ice. And then this will slowly turn into a, a brown dwarf as soon as it starts heating up, essentially. Uh, we can actually ch keep checking the temperature here. It's still very, very cold. And uh, it, for the most part, it just contains nothing but water. So this is essentially one giant ice ball. But it's about to cross the limit where it's going to turn into a gas giants because it's going to reach that critical mass when gas giants are formed. Uh, it's going to happen anytime soon now. And there we go, at 13 masses of Jupiter. It's actually a very, very beautiful gas giant. So we are now are on the way to turning this into a brown dwarf. To make this happen a little bit quicker, I'm going to add some more particles here, just so that it actually starts increasing in size a little bit faster. And so a lot of these water particles will start adding up to our total water bowl a lot, a lot faster. And you can kind of see it happening uh, relatively quick. And they actually start orbiting even more chaotically. And even though there's quite a lot of water on the outskirts, for the most part, you, you see that there's this um, very beautiful ring forming around the water bowl. And that's essentially how all of the solar systems are born. Eventually, this will start orbiting in a very sort of a disc-like fashion and turn into basically what we would call a, a helix or um, a helix-like motion. So here, let's just accelerate this a little bit faster, wait for it to grow in size, and then we're going to turn this into what's very likely going to be a star. And I think the fastest way to do this is to actually just go into powers again and just basically hold all of the velocities because now look at that it's going to start acquiring mass dramatically fast and it's also going to start becoming uh much hotter and acquiring even more mass because it's more massive and more hot now and finally possibly turn into a star it's going to become a red dwarf but not just a red dwarf it's going to become a water red dwarf now at this point it's still just water but because there's so much heat now, because there's so much pressure, a lot of that water is going to start falling apart into its components, hydrogen and oxygen. And as we know with hydrogen, that's essentially the fuel for stars. And this is what's going to be fueling our star as it's about to form. The oxygen will stay um, closer to the center of the star. And it might actually turn, if, the, if it's massive enough, it might actually turn on the so-called carbon nitrogen oxygen um, cycle, which creates even more energy for the star. So it might actually become a super, super powerful star. Uh, but for the most part, even the hydrogen um, conversion, hydrogen fusion, will actually be creating quite a lot of energy for, for the star that's about to form here any second. Let's stop all velocities once more time. And here we go, water star, excellent. So this is a red dwarf, very, very, very unstable, very uh, reactive, very pulsating and very beautiful at the same time. It has a lot of uh, flares, it has a lot of different activity going on. And uh, for the most part, this is actually essentially a star. Now we're going to create a few more particles here just to give the star a little bit more mass, uh, but I think this is actually kind of what I wanted to create, except uh, I actually was expecting it would have some crazy special effects around it as well. Let's see if we can add that. Maybe I'll do the following. I'm going to go in here and this time choose to give it a total mass of about 50 suns. It's going to be super, super heavy and it's all going to contain nothing but water that's going to be basically blue and it's going to be at a relatively similar distance to what it was before. And so now what we want to do is we want to basically just slow this down one more time and let's see what happens to our beautiful star. And look at that, it just explodes. It creates this huge, massive, massive star. 
This is a star that's 50 masses of sun. Not exactly what I expected, actually. I was hoping for something a little bit different, but this is actually even more fun. Okay, let's add some more. Let's see what happens if we add some more. But this time we're going to add tremendous amount of mass. So this is basically huge, huge amounts of water that is just kind of combining to this one large star. So once again, let's hold all velocities and see what actually happens. And look at that. It just absorbs it. It creates a huge star that's over 700, 800 masses of sun. This is bigger than any star we've discovered. The biggest star that we currently know is actually in the neighboring galaxy, the Large Magellanic Cloud. And that star is only about, oh, I don't know, 100 something, 260, maybe 350 suns. It's a star known as R136A1. It's only um, about 350 suns. This one here is 2,000 suns in, in mass. Very, very, very huge. It's also very large in radius. But you know what? It's actually not that big. Compared to UIS Qtai, which is the largest star that we know, it's still relatively tiny. That's because it actually still has relatively high density. And for some reason, it still uh, seems to be a red giant. And I think that's because of the temperature that never really changed. All right, so can I actually create maybe something else using a very similar technique? Well, I think I can. I think I'm actually gonna erase this for a second, start a new simulation and using a similar approach by maybe using um, things like Neptune, which already has a lot of water. I'm going to see if I can turn this into a different type of a star. I'm gonna see if I can actually create something a little bit different. So I'm going to do the same parameters as before, um, but this time I'm going to add a lot of masses of water, like 50 suns masses of water right away. It's going to start orbiting right away. And there you go. There is that star that I was actually looking for. Uh, I should have renamed this to water actually. Uh, and this is, this is the effect I was kind of looking for. Look at that. I've created a very large pulsating, what seems to be a regular orange star. And it's, it's pulsating very beautifully. And on top of that, it's also a water star as well. It's made entirely out of uh, entirely out of water. If you go here, it's 100% water. Uh, and what's interesting is that it's uh, not only is it a pulsar, but it's also a star that's like 49.5 masses of sun. So it's, it's a star that's not going to live very long. It's actually going to explode and create um, a very large supernova followed by a black hole that's very likely going to have 10 to maybe 15 masses of sun. Now, we can't really do this in the game. Um, technically, we could by pressing this button, but I know every time I press this, the game crashes, and this is a bug that hopefully will get fixed soon. But for now, what we can do is actually, we can change this into a black hole manually. Let's do it this way. Turn this off, fix this, and start shrinking this thing down. We're going to slowly shrink it to the point where this escape velocity right here becomes the speed of light. So you can see it's becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. And let's actually see what happens to it as the size of the star shrinks. It's basically going to become a tiny water world with super high density, ridiculously high amount of uh, radiation power and very likely is going to become a black hole. And Almost there. The escape velocity here is 260,000 kilometers per second. This is very, very close to the escape of, uh, or to the speed of light, basically. And so close. A little bit more. Let's go down to 140 kilometers in radius. And look at that. I've created a quasar. Or something that looks like a quasar. Basically, a black hole that is spinning and that has very, very strong magnetic field that also seems to be containing a lot of water. Go figure, right? Anyway, it's a water black hole. We we're able to create a water black hole, water quasar, and essentially that's kind of what I wanted to do in this video. Now, what I wanted to actually show you in this video is not the fact that you could create anything out of anything. Basically, any material would actually create a star, any material would create a planet if you add enough of it. But what I wanted to talk about is that there's actually some crazy, crazy things out there in our universe. There are uh, super powerful black holes that produce a lot of, a lot of power. And all of this power actually is powered entirely by water. So in that system that I talked about called APM, 
8279-5255. That's a system that we discovered a few years ago. Um, it's only about, no, well, not only about, but it's basically about 12 billion years, uh, 12 billion light years away from us. Um, that system has a very large black hole, 20 billion masses of sun, which I may actually change here. Let's do that. Let's do it right now. 20 billion masses of sun. And that particular black hole produces huge, huge, huge um, rays of radiation, huge jets that are visible from far, far away. And all of this is produced by the fact that there's actually water, uh, loads, loads, loads of amount of water orbiting around it. And that water creates this beautiful effect. Now, I don't think I, th I can create this effect here, but I can obviously try by placing maybe a few stars around this black hole. Although, yeah, I thought so. This is another bug where things don't actually orbit very well. But anyway, that's really all I wanted to show you in this video. I wanted to see if I could create various objects using water and create a water star, um, water planet, and of course, water black hole. And I was able to do that very, very well. Hopefully you learned something from this video and hopefully you'll come back tomorrow to learn something completely different. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys watching these videos and who likes to learn through video games, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Space out guys, see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye